Here is my question 12 in chapter 10. Here we have some data. We'd like to know how well the data correlates. Or in other words, how well X predicts Y. So a first challenge here is to, uh, is to get the data into R so that we can work with it. So I'm munging the data, or wrangling the data as it's sometimes called. I'd like to just be able to copy that and maybe paste it into R. Here I'm using coding ground R. Uh, let me take, I copied that data from the problem. Oh, shoot. How am I going to get this separated into uh, rows? It's, it's just a, the wrong kind of data. Well, here's an idea. I've copied that data, but if I paste it into a uh, word process uh, into a a spreadsheet, then I can copy this column. So I'm going to copy that column and paste it into a a text editor. Now uh, this this isn't this isn't Word. It's just a just a plain text editor, something like Notepad or something like that. And what I'd like to do here is um, search and replace here. So I'm doing a find and replace. Uh, what I'd like to find is the places that I've got a a carriage return. Uh, forward slash n will sometimes notify that, and I'd like to replace it all with the uh, with commas. Uh, so let's replace all of those. Shoot. So maybe it's a backslash n. And rep uh, there we go. So that replaced all of those carriage returns with a comma. I can take that out and edit this to be x is uh, we we'll use the concatenate function there to to build that now that's what I'd like to have in in R so here I am back in R let's get rid of that stuff that was giving us trouble and so now I've built that vector x I'm going to do the same thing for y now So now I'll copy that y, that y column. Paste it into my uh, text editor. Find and replace every carriage return with a comma. And then edit that to be a vector. So I've got it over here now. Of course, you could type all of those things in. You could just say x. We're going to assign that to be the concatenated values and type all of those values in independently. I was just looking at another strategy for getting that job done. Okay, so we've got these two vectors now. What we'd really like to know is what the plot of those look like. Oops. So let's uh, execute that script. And whoa, look at that. There's really a very much a, 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 an outlier sitting up here. So what we'd like to do in this problem is, is consider what, uh, what the correlation of this data is with and without that outlier. So let's look at the, the correlation of x and y. So the correlation coefficient here is going to be that amount. And then let's relook at all of this without that outlier. See that all, all the data here is has x values that are less than a hundred and and less than ten thousand in the y value. So that bunch of data probably is more accurate somehow. I mean, there's something very unusual about that one 
that one point. So I'm going to build a new vector that I'll call XWO, X without the outlier. And it's going to be the, all the X's where X is less than, than zero. I'm also going to build a, a Y without the outlier. And it's going to be Y, again, where the X value is less than 100. Then I'd like to look at the plot of X without the outlier and Y without the outlier and see what that looks like. Let me, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to come up here and, and uh, I'd like to comment out those two lines for just a minute while I run this, this code. And, and that's kind of grouped quite a bit better at that point. And at that point, let's uh, look at the, at the correlation of x without the outlier and y without the outlier. And run that code. And we get this negative um, correlation. Now, let's compare all of these correlations. I, I'm, not, I'm only going to do the one plot, the second plot, but let's do the, the correlation up here, and we'll see what those are. That's that first correlation, and there's the second correlation, significantly different. So this amount was the correlation with the outlier. Okay, so let's just copy that and put it right in here. And let me re And this one was the correlation without the outlier. So there's the correlation with and the correlation without. And uh, there's they're really significantly different. Um, with the inclusion of the outlier change the evidence or against the correlation. Uh, well, yeah, well, see, with the outlier, we've got a really, really strong positive correlation. Without the outlier, we've got a not very strong negative uh, correlation. Would the inclusion of the outlier change the evidence for or against it? Uh, yes, it, it changes the conclusion quite uh, enormously just at one point okay hope that helps we looked at two things here one was a little bit about munging the data you could have of course typed by hand all of that data in to see what the plots were like be able to identify where the outlier is and eliminate that outlier point it's this very last point in this particular case that's the outlier notice that that x value is is much different than these other x values and that the y value is much different as well. As long as one of those two values were different then it would be it would begin to produce a, an outlier if if uh, it could either be an outlier in the x or in the y. In this case it's an outlier in both. And it definitely made a, a significant difference. Okay, hope that helps.